All right, everyone. I want to welcome you to Lean On Me Radio and Podcast. My name is Rita Marie. We are on Amazon. We are on Anchor. We are on Spotify. Um, Just about anywhere you can find Lean On Me Radio Podcast. You should be able to Google it. You should be able to ask A-L-E-X-A. I'm not going to say that right now because she will come on. Um, Anyway, I want to welcome everybody in. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Yeti in the Mist. That's what he goes by. Okay. If he wants to divulge his name when he introduces himself, that's totally up to him. I met Yeti on Clapper and he is totally amazing. So right now, I am going to ask Yeti in the Mist to introduce himself. Hey, Rita. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm Yeti in the Mist. Uh, my real name is Nick. Um, and I've been on, well, I've been on Clapper. I met Rita on Clapper. I've been there since last October. Um, Rita, we I think we met sometime this year, right? Like we kind of ran into each other kind of, in a more consistent basis this year. Yes. Um, and it's been, it's been wonderful. Rita, you're, you're an incredible individual, all that you do to like support and lift others. I mean, it's just, it's awesome to watch. It's awesome to experience. And, uh, I just, I appreciate all that you do plus the show. I mean, it's a lot of good things you got going on. So, and yeah, so I'm, um, I do like uh, motivational content and um, a bunch of goofy comedy stuff, mainly to kind of bring a smile to everybody. Um, And then kind of like my life experiences I do through the motivation stuff. So like I use that to kind of give advice or kind of try and lift people up as much as possible and a ton of collabs. Right. right. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. So, oh, and the union. That's why I'm wearing the hat yes, right now for anybody union. that's in here. <laughs> the union. Why don't Can't you forget go the ahead union. and tell us a little bit about Clapper, your experience on Clapper, and what the union is about? Okay. So my experience on Clapper, let's start with that. So it's <clears throat> it has been, honestly, for the most part, it's been amazing. I mean, there's only been a very few instances where, like, you know, it's the the usual social media kind of run-ins and kind of some of those experiences, but um, you kind of just keep moving forward. Don't pay any attention to the negatives and, you know, kind of just keep doing what you're doing. And um, my experience has been really good. I mean, there's been so many amazing people I've run into on here, so many supportive people. Um, I've just felt like everybody for the most part has been pretty genuine, is pretty real. Um, cause there's a lot of emotions shared, right? Um, there's a lot of real that's shared on here and, um, that's a huge thing that's different. And that's really kind of one of the things that draws me that in the sense of community. Um, and right around the time that there was some drama going on, on the app itself, um, uh, in, in kind of multiple places, um, there was this, this radio with, uh, OG Papa and Vince Fango, and there was uh, diva was in there, a bunch of other people as well. I had gotten in this radio kind of after it had started for a bit and I overhear Vince mention, well, you know, the, the union break is serious and we're on that right now. And and I came in, he's like, are you on break? And I had no idea what was going on. I said, what's this, what is this union thing? Um, and he goes, well, uh, the union, and he went through the, um, you know, the basis of it where it's supportive. We're here as a group to, to be positive to each other, lift each other up. Um, and you're always on break. And I'm like, okay, so how do I become a part of this union? Cause like, this sounds pretty amazing. Uh, he's like, well, you got to pay your dues. So paying dues is singing a song or commissioning someone to sing for you. Um, there are people in the union that will gladly step up and sing a song for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and the whole point of it, right. is like that started randomly. And the whole point of that was kind of a joke, but you know, kind of a message as well that Vince and OG Papa were trying to deliver, which is, positivity and supporting each other, lifting each other. And the big part of of that is that there was so much drama and there was so much negativity that was going on um, that they just were like, you know, they were. And so were a lot of other people kind of just fed up with it and wanted to move in a different direction. So they did this. Um, I did the video challenge. And then from there, it kind of started to trickle. Right. Cause like everybody that was in that radio became part of the part of the union and then so forth. And 
it's been amazing. I mean, like Clapper has been flooded with a ton of amazing clapback videos, videos that are just tagged the union um, and people just like encouraging each other to do things like just to have fun, let go a little bit, you know, enjoy yourself and bring positivity. And um, honestly, you know, it was a stroke of genius that those two had of just go- like goofing around with something, but like the right message, right? The right energy. Um, so the union is growing and, and, um, it's, a, it's not evolving as much as it's kind of getting to a point where and I think this is really cool that Vince came up with is he asked people, why do you want to be in the union? Like, like just what, it, what is it about the union that you know of already? Cause if you like, basically it works off of people approaching, you know, everybody that's already involved and kind of asking a question. Right. Um, and the question is, you know, why do you want to be in it? And it's, it's great. Like, um. I think Carrie was Carrie 2021 was one of the first ones that had that kind of like what why do you want to be in the union thing and it, it's just and Carrie is a she's a riot she's amazing and like you know she was going to fit in right away but it was cool because it it's you know Rita it's one of those things where it's like I've always wanted to be a part of something like that that feels like a movement but was not intended to be such uh in the beginning it was just intended as to have some fun right, right? and this is like it's real like it it is organically growing and i think it's wonderful i don't see that anywhere else mm-mm, mm-mm. i don't either mm-mm. no and that's one of the things i love about clapper um and not only that but we have radio over on clapper okay now i know that facebook and instagram and all that has a form of it but it's not the same and we are actually ourselves over there you know people don't some people do i'm not going to say they don't um but most of us don't put it on an act we are who we are and we do what we do we have fun we collaborate together um we do clapbacks i don't a lot of people probably don't know what clapbacks are but we do clapbacks we interact with each other and we learn and grow together this is what is great about this community so why don't you interject a little bit on one of the events we just recently had with clapper um the uh the play yeah murder in a show why don't you talk about that and um also let them know that we are going to have it again so that people that missed it can actually see it. Yeah. So um, recently, well, recently it was the second production um, uh, that Diva and company have put on. Uh, Diva Las Vegas is uh, one of the people on Clapper um, and then Rooster, um, Demo Daddy. Um, So they did one before it was called Cancelled and it was like an old time old timey radio show where mm-hmm. all of it's done in radio on clapper and it literally follows that exact same kind of uh theme is like and feel right so it's right. all audio you have to close your eyes and you got to kind of you know envision what's going on and that's the point of the voice actors is to bring that to life for you um so this one was called murder in a show we just had it this uh past saturday um, it was it was a, another success. I think it was a, a, a blast. It was a great time. Everybody said they really enjoyed it. Um, you know, Chef mentioned uh, uh, what was it um, in the uh, underdog spotlight last night? He mentioned that he was broadcasting that that show, the murder in a show, to like three hundred people where he was wow. at, and he said that like. Uh, there were a lot of people because I guess it was a retirement community. So like one, a lot of people uh, were of the age that remember some of the radio shows mm-hmm. and they said they loved it. It brought them back to like those days when they're sitting in their living room, just listening to the radio and the show was going on, you know, and then like the Oval Teen commercials and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they loved it. And I was like, that was really cool. Like, had I known that before the show, I probably would have been a bit more nervous. <laughs> right, right. But it's it was a great show. Um, it was a, it was a. Uh, what do they call that film noir, I guess, or something like that, where it's like kind of dark comedy. Um, but there's like, you know, this undertone of murder and everything. Uh, it was great. Everybody did a wonderful job. Um, Rooster and Diva just, uh, they were phenomenal uh, in their direction and putting this whole thing together. Um, 
And there was a saying, you know, that, that we went in with, right. When we started out, there were a lot of us that didn't really interact with each other all that often. Right. It was great because right. we're meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, so we went in some of us friends, some of us not even knowing each other. And we left as a family. Like we literally did. Like we left as a family. We check on each other outside of there. Um, we chat with each other. Um, we're doing collabs now with each other. We're doing all these different things. Um, it was a really great experience. And I guess I've never acted in my life. Uh, so I, this was a new experience for me. Um, it was great. Everybody did phenomenal. I mean, did you, you, you heard it right. And it was, it was great. I mean, I yeah, thought, you know, but I haven't listened to the recording yet. I loved it. I loved it. Um, and I'm not a TV watcher anymore. Okay. So with that being said, I, I cannot just sit and watch TV. Okay. It drives me absolutely crazy. So I was able to sit and listen to the radio and still do other stuff, you know, and it was very entertaining. You know, it was, it was really, I mean, I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't have enough words about it because I don't want to sit and stare at a TV screen all day. You know, that's not me. Yeah. Um, Rooster came in, he was on Facebook. Um, he wants to, Rooster, you can, oh, I think I have to unmute your mic. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think he wants to um, ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Most definitely. Rooster, are you there? Or do you want me to hey, ask? Everybody out there on the radio as well, a clapper. Hope you all are doing well. well it's not working. Why is, oh, there we go. Finally, it's, it's the life coach here. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Life no. coach. I thought it was Rooster. Hey. Yeah, I, I, I was in earlier and then I had a phone call. It kicked me out and I tried to get back in. It just kept waiting for host. And so I was just trying to get back in. So I went and missed this epic, you know, awesome right. duo we got. <laughs> but the question <laughs> for um, you, uh, Yetlin, and uh, um, my thing is, is, uh, what does it mean to really share the positivity that is you? Where does it come from? What gives you that inspiration? What was the moment that you realized that kindness outbeats hate? Wow, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's a there's a couple moments in my life that like, um, I realize this, right? So when I was younger, um, I got, I got, you know, like most, a lot of kids, I got picked on a lot. I got, you know, you could pick every corner of my town where I was at and I probably 50% or 60% of those, I got my ass kicked on those. Um, but the, and, and I never threw a punch back. I never, uh, I never tried to hurt anybody back. Right. I always felt like, you know, I could potentially hurt somebody didn't want to do that. Um, and well, I guess there was also the fear that my mother always told me, if I ever find out you got into a fist fight, I'm going to kick your butt. And I was like, and I was deathly afraid of that. Cause, uh, I'll be honest with you. There's no one scarier than my mother. Um, and so that, you know, that was a point in my life where I just like, I never threw hands with anybody. I would pin them. I would hold them or something to, you know, to stop whatever was going on, but I would never throw the fist back. So that was like my first experience where I was just like in my head, you know, they would stop after a while. And then a lot of those kids, they turn into your friend, they turn into my friends, they turn into my friends over time and things work themselves out. You figure out the motivations behind it. That was a young age, but where I really clicked with this, I'd have to say it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, maybe Oh, just before I met uh, Ariel, um, you know, there was, there were, I was in my first marriage. Um, it was, uh, it was a really tough spot in my life. Then um, some things happened um, and that fell apart. Um, <clears throat> and I had lost my mother at 17 when I, you know, prior to all that. And, and I never dealt with that. And at that moment, I had been treated so badly. Uh, my job was just every everything felt like it was super negative all the time. Let's just put it that way. Like I was always just getting hammered with something negative. And I found myself literally all the time saying, 
no matter what I do, it's going to always be this way. I could be any kind of person and it's just going to always end up negative. It's always going to end up this way because everything I do, it always ends up in the same place. I get hurt. I lose people, whatever. Da, 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 da. And then one day I literally sat there and I said, you know what? I just stopped saying that to myself and, and it clicked, but then I met Ariel <clears throat> and she kept feeding me those exact same things. Like, no, it's what you're feeding the universe. It's what you're telling the universe. It's what you're putting out there and you're getting it back constantly. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll be completely honest. It was, it was her drilling it in my head, her giving me that consistency of reminding me of that, that that's when it clicked. And that was maybe, maybe a year and a half after we met, like it finally started to be like, Oh, okay. If I just, if, if I just approach people with kindness constantly, I bet you any money I can miss a lot of negativity that exists out there, right? And if there is any, at least I'm approaching it in a better way so I can handle it differently. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I dealt with, from that point on, you know what's crazy is when I learned that, it opened the floodgates on me of having to deal with every single thing that I had repressed for so long. Um, so it's been a long journey. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm so thankful for Ariel sticking with me through that. Um, I was not always the best person, I can tell you. I've had my moments of just all that negative energy and negative moments and memories and everything that I've never dealt with. Man, it really can come out. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Let's just put it stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, it takes a strong person to stay by someone's side who's going through something like that. And, uh, you know. I owe a lot to her, <laughs> but that would be the moment. It's like, let's say about, you know, about two years ago is when I it really, I don't know, three years ago, it really clicked for me and I put it in action on a consistent basis. And then it really just has been, I've always been a kind person, but like putting it in practice all the time to everybody, that's a whole different thing. It is. It's a whole different ball game. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would be, I mean, that's a great question, man. Thank you so much for that one. That's a wonderful question. Um, that's an awesome question, Russell. Definitely. I appreciate you, man. That was a really, really good question. So Yeti, um, let's see. Um, Clapper News and Reviews, which is a rooster, says that the radio is going to be Saturday, July the 23rd. At yep. what time? Uh, I believe it, uh, Rooster, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be the same thing. Uh, it's going to be 1 Eastern, so 12 Central. Okay, all right. I believe it's going to be at that time. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. I know, he's got all the information. We don't have the time right. At least y'all know the date. And yep. um, we will be posting about this all over social media. Okay, oh, yeah. it will be well known. And also, in the link in my bio, you'll see Clapper News and Reviews. It will also be in that. So it's a paper that is going out across all social media. Like I said, it's in the link in my bio. You can check it out and you'll see the dates and the times of all the radios, including the radio show that's going to be going on. Um, so the other question he had was, um, well, you've already answered what is the union. Um, <clears throat> the other question he had is, you're a busy man. How, how do you do it all? <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> that that's interesting that that gets brought up now is because I'm kind of hitting a, a, a point of like, all right, so, so I've been testing a lot of different waters. I've been jumping in and doing a bunch of different stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, it's like that next step, right? It's like, um, and Life Coach will know this. I've, I've um, been chatting with him a bit. Um, what is it I want to focus on? So that way my message actually is consistent and it will get out there, right? More. Um, if I, I can keep dipping my toes in a lot of things, but it becomes that thing where like you might spread yourself too thin and your message may not actually hit. And, you, you know, it's, it's just like the union, I think, kind of in a way. You have to kind of, it's like a focus. It got focused and organically the message was received and it started to grow. Um, right. So like I did the play. And I really do want to do more of the plays with everybody. I had such a blast with it. Um, and if that happens, you know, I'll, I'll figure out how to make that happen. Um, 
another thing that I do a lot of is collabs and I do, um, I do a lot of the meaningful, like motivational videos, like the, uh, make your uh, pain, feel your strength kind of stuff. Um, and those take a bit of time because there's a lot of, um, video work. I go and get a lot of, a lot of capturing of footage and then a lot of editing in there. But how do I do it all? I have a wife that's super understanding and super supportive, um, who also has her thing, right? So we kind of literally split and figure out how we can help each other facilitate those things for each other, right? And um, with three kids, it's, you know, it's a, there's, there's a lot there as well. Um, again, she's like superwoman. She, she just does a ton. Um, so it's just, finding time wherever I can find it, honestly. Like I, I don't like, so, so there's a lot of stuff like my, my, uh, content usually is driven by what motivates me in the moment, how I'm feeling. Um, or if I'm going through something, right? right? Like if I'm going through something that day, I may get instantly have an idea for a, a video that I could deliver that message in. Right. Um, it's, it's just, um, you know, finding that those little moments. I mean, at night I get maybe, you know, I get a little bit of time at night um, where that's, and if you'll notice, I release my videos most of the time, like super early in the morning, like one mm -hmm. or two in the morning. And that's because I'm usually working on them and I'm just like, <laughs> I get so excited. I can't wait to post it at around seven or eight, like you're supposed to. I just am like, no, I want to get it out there. <laughs> that sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. So um it's a juggling act. And, 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 okay. So getting back to my original point. So I'm, I'm now having to step back and say, okay, what of all this really rings with me? So my message comes out a hundred percent. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm starting to narrow some of it down and I'm starting to say like, okay, let's start managing it. I got to start getting, I'm a project manager by trade. So like, that's what I do for a living. Um, I'm going to, I'm starting to spreadsheet everything and I'm putting down like, here's all the projects I want to do. Here's the people I want to work with. Here's the messages I want to get out there. You know, I kind of do all that stuff. And then now putting myself in a place to say, there's no need to rush to get all that. Like, like the creation of visibility, you know, it's there. So now, now I can move at a pace and, 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 and bring it, you know, forefront. The other part is, you know what I struggle with? It's keeping up with being able to support everybody else's content at the same time and be there to comment on a lot of it, be there to uh, share it or clap it back. Right. And stuff like that. I will tell you that is a big challenge because God, there's so many amazing people we've met. It's like, I can only do so much of that before it's eating like an hour, two hours of time. And it's like, you got to juggle it. And you know, one thing I do struggle with um, is I struggle with the anxiety of missing everybody, missing everybody that I, you know, that I really want to pay attention to. Yeah, that's that's the same with me, too. Um, it is. It's hard to deal with. And so people are a lot of times it's going to take people to understand and they're not going to understand until they get where we're at. OK, and we don't understand because we're not where they're at you, you know what i'm saying it just kind of it's it's weird but um i do the best i can you know i'm only one person i raised two grandchildren i you know i have a life and we all have a life so everything cannot be social media you know it just can't be anyway i think karen wanted to ask a question let me yep. see if i can get youtube unmute and Storm was in here too, I believe. I don't know if she had yeah, a question. Um, I'm trying to get to people, but. Oh, you're good. There it goes. Hi. Well, I, I really didn't have a question. I was kind of late coming into this, but, you know, can't miss Yeti. <laughs> hey, Diva. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm still on a, a bit of a high from Saturday, honestly. Like that's, it was such a. It was a blast. Like I said earlier, like the um, learning that chef was broadcasting that to as many people as he was like, had I honestly, had I known that before we pre performed, I would might have been a bit more nervous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was. And, and I did hear it. So I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Um, well, you're but, all over social media right now. Not on YouTube yet, but you will be. 
Um, <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Get used to it, you know, get used to making this appearance because you're an amazing person and you have a lot of talents and it has really been a pleasure getting to know you. Um, so Rooster says, hi, Diva. Um, he said, Rooster says, that's the correct time. Um, like I said, you're all over social media right now. Um, <laughs> I appreciate those comments, by the way, and the, those those uh, compliments, uh, Rita. Really, I do. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Do you want to check in on Clapper and see if anybody on Clapper has a question? Yeah. Um, if anyone on Clapper has a question, just raise your hand. You can pop up to the um, <clears throat> to the top here, and then I can answer them through there as well. I'm keeping my mic open on here just so I can field any things on there as well. Um, you know, while we're waiting to see if there's any questions from anyone, um, I think Teresa. Okay, here, we got Teresa popped up. Hey, Teresa, how's it going? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Can you hear them, Rita? No, I'm going to mute my mic, though, so I can hear them, and I'm just going to okay. listen in for a few minutes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, go ahead, Teresa. Sorry about that. Oh, Teresa, thank you so much. I'm, I truly appreciate you, and I think you're an amazing person, too. I had so much fun working on that play with you, and I'm not kidding. Like, it's all true what we all are saying. Like, you getting to that lead role, that was all you. You did an amazing job. You delivered like it was incredible. So I'm just it was I'm elated how awesome that was and that experience. And thank you again so much. I feel the same way about you, Teresa. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Most definitely. <clears throat> um, really awesome. So, Yeti, let me let me just ask you another question. Um, you know, I met you on Clapper and. I really don't know a whole lot about you. Um, I'm getting to know you. I guess um, the question that I would ask at this point is, what is your main objective? What are you trying to put out there? Where do you want to go? What direction are you going in? Um, so for me, one of the things that um, that I want to put out there right like so one of the messages i put out there is make your pain feel your strength and a lot of my content is around that like that that um term or whatever you want to call it that i have this thing that i have um it's motivational it's lift up it's uh you know you uh, being unified and not divided like like <clears throat> drawing the strength from everybody, bringing each other together. Like that's been my focus um, mainly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the motivational stuff. And that's why it's kind of like, you know, the pick me up videos here and there and the, that kind of stuff for the, you know, um, there is like, I've ha had this like overwhelming urge and like just this feeling of pull towards becoming like a a life coach in some way or something along those lines. Um, I've, I've always wanted to do that. Um, just right next to me here, I've got like all my Simon Sinek start with why, and you know, the find your why, and you've got your, uh, you know, leaders eat last all that stuff. Um, and I just, you know, for me, I've just learned that helping people is, I mean, that's like, honestly, if, if there's anything I could do that I'd want to do, I'd want to help others and see them succeed because, that helps them move and help someone else and then help them succeed. Like you hope that that grows, right? Someone told me the other day and I, I was struggling with this, you know, I try so hard to impact as many as I can at once each time. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, it was like, it was frustrating, but also what I needed to hear. He's like, it's going to run you in the ground. If you try to push yourself to help, multiples at all times in all directions with what you're trying to do to push people for uni unity and all this stuff. But if you, you should hope that you can just help one. Right. And then that one moves and helps another. And you're hoping that's, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, I've heard that before, but like that didn't ring any truer than that moment when I was told it. Cause I was struggling with like, 
there was just something that was going on and I was struggling with like, like, how do I deal with this? Right. Like, how do I move forward in this and keep my mind in that positive mindset? So I don't lose track of where I'm trying to go. And him saying that was just like, bam. Yeah. You know, it's all about scheduling and this is something I'm trying to work on and focus on, you know, you got to take things in bite-sized pieces. Okay. Now here's the thing. I'm a life coach. Okay. That's what I do. I do these podcasts. I do a lot of different things. I work around two children, you know, but I take it in bite-sized pieces, you know, now I'm not going to say I do it perfectly. Okay. Sometimes I get stressed. I do. And I got to take a step back and I got to breathe and, you know, focus and just, you know, get my center again. Um, but here's the thing. You don't have to be certified to be a life coach. Okay. Russell is a lot more than a life coach, a lot more, whether he wants to admit it or not. Okay. Um, you cannot give medical advice being a life coach, just a life coach. Okay. Um, you can't write prescriptions, that sort of thing. So here's what I want to ask you. What's stopping you? <laughs> Uh, exactly what I push in a lot of my content, um, you know, so uh, vulnerability moment. Um, I suffer and deal with the same things that I try and help people solve. Uh, that's why I take a lot of my experiences that I just experienced throughout the day or week or whatever and, and get motivation to help others because at that point I'm dealing with it, right? And I'm saying, okay, Here's my thought of how I'm going to deal with this. And that's what I use as the message. And then by doing that, it's almost like writing it down for mm -hmm. me. It's like, because I put it out there and I, and I did something physical with it. Right. And I made it happen. Now it's going to be, it like rings with me a different way. It now sits with me a different way. And now I start thinking about it more rather than the one-off moment that I had having it hit me. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so that's how, that's how I do it. Now, what's holding me back? The biggest problem for me, <laughs> this is a huge vulnerable moment. Um, I have a huge problem liking myself and loving myself and showing myself any kind of appreciation. Uh, Rita, you and I started tapping on that in the, in Telegram the other day. Um, mm -hmm. You 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 kind of witnessed it firsthand in my response, right? Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't negative. I was just more like, I hate talking about myself. I hate saying anything positive it like makes me cringe right um so i i deal with that and it's for me it's a very serious thing because it has held me back for a long long time um it still does yeah, yeah. i mean a lot of us i think right i mean a lot of us have a version of that um because we're not narcissists we're not able to be all about ourselves we're in and, and it's it's a different mindset right it's a different place like right. um so that's what's holding me back. Honestly, it's, it's, it's the belief in myself to do it. And then, you know, and this is another piece of full, full disclosure and vulnerability here. It also takes the fact that you have to be able to accept success when it happens. Mm -hmm. And to me, what's always been scary is becoming a victim of my success, meaning that I gain it, I attain it. Now, you know, getting there felt like a huge amount of work and everything. And it is, and there's a lot that goes into it. But when you get on that other side, now the ball game really starts because now you have to maintain, you have to continue. You have to, there's a lot that goes into that. Mm -hmm. um, and the fear of success has always been, you know, I've dealt with that ever since I was a kid. Um, you know, I, I, in sports, I always did very well and I could get into any position I wanted to play because it just, for whatever reason, it clicked with me and, um, I'd get to those positions and I somehow I'd sabotage myself because right. I was like, Oh yeah, I psych myself out. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to say something that I learned here. Um, what we bring to the table today is because we're a product of what we grew up with. You know, we learn something from everybody in our life. So if you've got what I want to call and what I've learned to call it a poverty mindset, 
Okay, that's basically what it is, the poverty mindset. Um, it's a fear of success. Why? Because that fear is actually based on failure. You're more afraid to fe- fail than you are to succeed. Okay, but you have got to fail in order to succeed. Okay, so with that being said, I want to tell you, because I think this will help right now, a little bit about myself. Okay, because I have been on social media since MySpace, which is 15 years ago. Okay, (laughs) it wasn't up until about five years ago that I was actually able to get on video. Okay. I had to overcome that. There's a lot of things I had to overcome, you know, and today I'm comfortable with video, but I still get nervous. Every time I go to do one of these, I get nervous and it's like everything. And I, I think I told you before we came on, you know, everything was going wrong and I was about to say, nope, not doing it. You know, it's not going to work out. I'm not going to do it. And something told me inside, okay, calm down, get your center, focus. It's going to be all right. You know, we have to learn to breathe. We have to learn to focus. We, me, myself, I'm going to say we, I'm an empath. Okay. I have ADHD. Okay. My mind is going like this 24 seven. It's like, it never wants to shut down. (laughs) <laughs> okay. You know, we have to. Yeah. And if you can get to that point, you can overcome some of these little stumbling blocks because that's all they are. They're not mountains, they're stumbling blocks. Yeah, we make mountains out of molehills. <laughs> right. 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 Um, I think here, hold real quick. That's amazing advice. Um, I think we have a couple people on Clapper here, but I wanted to really quick chime in on that. Um, what's really been something that has been interesting to me, and I've been trying to figure out and learn and understand how, when you say fear of failure, like I, I'm a big, I love talking about that. Like I love talking about how failures are lessons and stepping stones, not supposed mm-hmm. to be negatives. They're supposed to be lessons you learn from to move forward. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I totally believe in that. Um, And there are things I can do that with. And there's things that I can't, right? It's interesting how it's very like, you can go down a rabbit hole of all these different things you can and can't with that. Um, I still don't understand how I'm here today. And how I pushed forward through all those things. Failed as freaking often as I did. Uh, And even with how negative I was. During a lot of that, right? And how I would blame others or blame this or blame that and all these different things. How the hell did I still continue to go forward? Like I have, I'm trying to learn what that is because that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That was like, where did that come from? Because I wasn't cheering for myself. So how the hell did I do that? Like what, what was it that moved me through that? Right. I don't know if that's the instinctual survivability piece, if that's the maybe just habitually what was built in me as I grew up on how I just dealt with my life. I don't know, but I'm learning every day, little different things that are cluing me into that. And each time it's like a little knob. And when that knob gets turned, it's like, it's like, bing. it's like, you just got hit with caffeine. It's like, Holy crap. What is that? It's addictive. I want to know more. Like, tell me. (laughs) Right. So you said we had some people on Clapper. Yep. Was- let me, let me get, I think Rooster was first and then we got Storm. So Rooster, I saw you pop up. Did you have another question? A life coach, definitely you already are a life coach. Learning to accept our notoriety and being comfortable with it is your last phase. Until you get to be a full life coach, just between you and I, I think you're already there. I got a question for you. You're always positive coming into radios, showing love and positivity. You leave the radio making sure that you acknowledge everybody in the room. And you, you, you hand them that positivity and that love once again before exiting. Community. 
what drives you to focus your attention on the community as a whole? Why do you do it? Um, everybody's got great questions tonight. <laughs> um you're all wonderful people i mean that's the first thing like i mean it's so hard for me nowadays to not immediately lead with positivity and love to anybody um you know i get choked when i start talking about some of this stuff but the thing is is like for me it's i didn't get shown a lot of that when i was younger um i didn't get shown how love and positivity can be what fuel you. It was more so fear this, be aware of this, anxiety ridden this, and that's going to keep you safe and yada, yada, yada. Um, so why I do it, it's because I know inside of everybody, we have that ability to be good. And by being good, that is the best that we can be for ourselves. And then we'll repay it. Right? Like, just by, just by, so, so, so here's a, here's like a, another part to that. And this is an amazing question, Rooster. So like something I changed roughly about three years ago. And I said to myself, I'm just going to do this. Everybody I meet, this is what I'm going to do. At the end, even if it's someone I, I see on the street and it's a passerby, right. And they say, hi, I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm a, I appreciate you. Saying hi is one thing, <clears throat> you know, um, just being kind energetically, that is another thing. And those are all great things. But when you say, I appreciate you to someone that you don't even know, you can watch immediately the effect it has on them. I mean, I've had people, I, so I work in the city of Chicago, right? So like when I do go into the office, there are so many people just busy, busy, busy with their life. And there's so much going on, so much going on. So they're so laser focused on all this stuff that's going on that I even purposely will just look at someone and make eye contact with them as they're walking by and just say, I appreciate you and just keep walking. Right. It's, I said, I was going to do this. And I said, let me see if that can be an impact, something I can do that's so small and see how that works. And so on Clapper, I just brought that with me. Right. And, um, I want everyone to feel acknowledged. I want everyone to understand that, like, you matter as many people as there could ever be on this planet. You do matter and you're here. There's a reason. The statistics even tell you you're lucky to be here. So by being here, I want you to know I acknowledge your presence, your existence. At the same time, come along. It's fun when we're positive. It's fun when we're when we show each other appreciation. And guess what? If I lift you up, you lift me up. Everyone else that's around us that sees and experiences that is going to taste it, feel it. It's going to happen and they're going to start getting it and it's going to start growing. Um, so for me, it is all about community, right? And in our world right now, it's just, there is so much negativity. There's so much division being created on purpose because of just all these other things. And we don't even get into those, but it's happening. I'd rather be part of a solution that's positive than part of the problem in allowing myself because I also deal with anxiety and depression like many people do. Um, I take medication for my anxiety, right? Like I have to because I'm not as active as I used to be. Like I was a, a tremendous athlete. Now I <laughs> I could barely run a block and a half. That's going to change too. That's another part of my thing I'm actively going to get back to is being back in shape and doing those things. And 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 it's it's all part of a, you know, uh, just a, a direction and path I'm looking to take. But Rooster, to answer your question, it's together we're always going to be stronger than divided. And to say I, I appreciate you is inviting someone into seeing that I've already given you respect. I've already given you trust. Doesn't matter the amount. It's very little, but it's still something. And it's saying I acknowledge you. That's going to move them in a positive direction. I agree. Um, did we have anybody uh, else? I'm all about it. Um, you're an inspiration to me. You teach me daily. Um, I appreciate and love you, brother. That's all I have. I appreciate and love you too, man. God, thank you for the, those nice words, man. I honestly like <laughs> this, this kind of stuff. Like, you know, I, I get so like, <sighs> um, I really appreciate you, brother. And you do so much for the community as well, Rooster. I mean, you know, we talked 
about that a lot, you and I, and I've gotten to know you a lot more. You're an incredible individual. Thank you for that, man. Um, Storm, I see you're up here. I don't know if you had a question or not, but. So kind of a little bit of both and hello. Um, I think I followed you shortly before the play. I had seen you on the FYP, but I didn't really know you. I didn't interact too much. Um, and then of course I got to know you so much better during the play. Um, and we talked about it a little bit last night, the chemistry that we all had was really awesome. And, but one of, and I love the positivity and goofiness and I love everything that you've said. Uh, and I know that every time you say, you know, I love and appreciate you all, like that does all, always mean something to me, even if it, you know, however small, like you said. Um, I can relate to so much of what you were saying because, you know, I have anxiety and depression, um, my self-esteem and confidence and things like that. And I also like in seventh grade, I, you know, was made point guard on the basketball team, but I quit for the first game because I couldn't handle the anxiety of playing in front of people. And, you know, I was in chorus and my teacher wanted me to do a solo, but I couldn't do it. So I can understand the self-sabotage and I too um, seem to give advice more easily be, for the same reason you said. Um, but one of one of your videos that really moved me was the one where you, you were in the snow, you know, and it was really reflective. And I've seen that one a couple of times actually. So my question is, what have you done or what do you do when you find yourself struggling and kind of going through the motions of your growth process when you do kind of get in those tougher spots where you're like, oh, I'm feeling like this. And you know how you had mentioned earlier on how Ariel stuck by you during some, like, what are some things that you have done or you continue to do that really helps you kind of progress and grow in a positive way? First off, uh, thank you. And that video, uh, I can, at some point, I can go over what my motivations were behind that video and where that came from, because that was such a crazy experience, that one. Um, I, I, I really, I kid you not, I literally was sitting here during work. I heard a song and I was in a place and some stuff was going on. And I literally like, in that moment, like literally sent a message to my boss and said, uh, I got to take the rest of the day off. Um, I got to go. I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'll be back tonight, but I got to go. Um, you know, luckily I have a great boss. I'll talk more about that with you, Storm, at some point, because that was a crazy story. But I left. I literally just left and I went and made that. That was all done in that one day. Um, how do I handle those moments? How do I? Um, well, I'll tell you, I did it real poorly for a long time. Um, and when I say I did it really poorly, I mean. <laughs> Our brains, our minds, our emotions combined with that. They're monsters at time, times. And they can literally convince you of things that are so not true. Um, and I used to let it win. And then <clears throat> I was doing therapy um, because I just, I needed to have someone outside of my life that gave me perspective in a certain way, uh, without bias. And I needed someone to be very real that wasn't close to me. Right. Because you need that kind of, sometimes you need that, that it's almost validation <laughs> to a lot of things you hear. Um, and one of the things that really stood out to me that I already knew, and I had done this at some point, but I just lost it somewhere along the way. I got broken. I got beat down. Like you know, there was a point in my life that life had literally made me feel like it ripped every single possible thing it could from me. Um, I literally had no idea where the hell I was going. I had no idea anything. And everyone that I had known in my life that had ever been some kind of strength to me either died or dropped me. And that created such a ridiculously terrible monster in my head and in my emotions. And for years, I beat myself up. Uh, and then there just got to a point where I was, I was just 
you know, I must have hit a wall or I must have hit like a, a part of the bottom. I don't think I hit complete bottom, right? Because I think there are different versions and levels, but I hit a bottom. That bottom was people around me were getting affected by this negativity and all this BS that I couldn't figure out. Um, I was hurting people I loved. I was, it was just, it was terrible. Um, so I just had to start speaking better to myself, right? Even if I didn't believe it, I had to start speaking better to myself. And just by practicing that every day, and you know, Ariel again is she's a <clears throat> she's a big reason why I do this, right? And and why and why I got out of that funk. Um, you know, is man, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, You are worthless, you are just not worth anything, man. You can't do a god dang thing. Everything you do, you're gonna fail at, and that failure is not gonna be a lesson, it's gonna be a signification of how terrible of a person you are. Man, I used to tell myself that every morning. And then I finally got to a point, <laughs> there's a lot of things that happen, where I literally said to myself, nope, nope, it's time that I force myself to hear a different narrative, right? Um, that's what I had to do. <laughs> that's just really what I had to do. And I do that a lot. Going back to what you were kind of saying earlier, if it even helps one person, and I know that's something that we, when we first started doing Clapper Pride Radio, at first, you know, we're excited and we want the people and we want to, but then we quickly got to that realization also. It's like, yeah, but because we were helping each week, just one person, it seemed like uh, consistently, and that's all it was about. And I just want you to know for what it's worth, and I appreciate you so much being open and vulnerable because I know that's not easy. But I love and appreciate you so much. I am so excited to get to know you better and Ariel better. And you have helped me. And so, and I, I know for a fact you've helped others. So please continue being that awesome shining light. And I love you, man. Love you too, Storm. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> awesome. Um, okay, so we got enough time for one more question. Is there anybody else in radio that needs to ask a question or wants to? Yeah, I think there's pieces here. Peace, did you have a, a question? I saw you pop up. Well, first of all, I want to say welcome. I mean, I'm back. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you'll welcome me. Uh, um, I also want to say that you helped me out when I was really down. You said it's okay to call me. And we talked and I still remember how long it was like 14 minutes, but you said the same things today. Some of the same things you said to me. Now I know you all know that I just went into treatment and I didn't stay as long as I should have, but God taught me a lesson. And I believe that I was sitting here the whole time you were talking, saying, you know what? I am awesome. I am awesome. I am awesome. I am awesome. I'm awesome because I'm awesome. And I want to thank you for what you said, because just me saying that and just, you know, I usually say hi to people when I walk by them, but now I think I'm going to say, I appreciate you. Whether they say anything back or not, it made me feel good. Just it, you know? So I think I'm going to start doing that too. And maybe we can start a movement of, I appreciate you movement, you know? I, I learned a lot in nine days, believe it or not. I'm nice and tan now, too, just so you know. <laughs> and you got out of the house. <laughs> what? And you got out of the house. <laughs> I did. I did for a whole week. I went swimming and I had back massages like every day. <laughs> so, I mean, but it was, it, I mean, it was a mental health place. So there was... You know, like, I don't know. There was a lot more downtime than I expected. And I think that I I could help maybe change the mental health as far as what you do for people. You know, because I don't know. I was in there 
Or not. There was a lot more downtime than I expected. And I didn't go there for the pool, although I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. Swimming under palm trees is a beautiful image. <laughs> But, you know, I had to do some real work and I got, I know God puts you where you're supposed to be for a reason. And I know I went there now for the reasons and I feel a lot better. I did find out some medical issue I had, which could be causing me to be depressed and down. Um, so I have diabetes now too. Well, I'm not diagnosed with it yet, but I'm pre-diabetic. So while I was there, I got my numbers down to 156 in four days. That's stress. That's stress relief. <laughs> so I, it helped me to know that I could do it. Well, you, you but, are amazing, Peace. And your journey is, you know, I think you're completely starting a new path. And you're... I, I believe it in my heart. You, yeah, and and just hearing your voice right now, you sound even brighter. Like your your energy's brighter. Um, Absolutely, I I did all the experiences, and I had the experiences. Well, I I, I want to thank you, Peace, because you've impacted me in in an amazing way. You know, just even uh, trusting me enough to talk with me uh, about your problems and what you were going through, and just to trust me to be there and. You are a strong person. So, you know, I mean, yes, I'm well, down. I just, what, I just heard what you said and I could relate like totally with like that dark place and that, you know, and when you, when you just said, I, I told myself I had to stop it and I had to like put away the baseball bat and just embrace who I am. And, and that's what I feel I'm going to do from now on. My mother been talking to me and you know what i'm not crying about it anymore because i want the people in my life that want to be in my life and i have those people and someone told me that more than 10 people that you're really close to is yeah you know, i mean you can have acquaintances don't get me wrong but it's okay to only have a few really close people in your life because that's what most people have oh yeah that's the trust circle you know and and those but are the ones you really hold close but, Right, but Clapper's a different beast. Like, you can be close to a lot of people. That is true. And I like that. <laughs> because, but we, you know, we're not in each other's faces, per se. Yeah. But we spend time in each other's lives. Most definitely. And I feel like that is important. Peace. Just as important yeah. as your physical awesome. relationships. So Clapper just makes us better people. And yeah. that's what I want to be from now on, a better person. And you will be. Peace, you are awesome. Okay, okay. we're going to leave the radio open for a little bit for anybody that wants to chat afterwards, okay? Yep. But, Thank you, um, Peace. I think it, I, I love you, Peace, and we'll be there in just a minute, okay? Um, yeah. I want to say thank you to everybody that was here today because um, we do appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, thank yeah, you, Peace. I've got to ask you, okay? Yep. I know there has got to be one phrase that sticks out in your mind the most that's important to you. What would that phrase be? I'm a human in training. Okay. I'm, I'm a human in training. Awesome. Human in training is, is what, what sticks out to me all the time. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, um, oh, Rita, real quick, may, may I just really quick, um, for the for the show, because I didn't get a chance to mention, um, uh, Aussie Kaz and I show, I know a lot of people in here on the radio oh, and stuff. Yeah, we we're going to talk about that, that's right, for the other show. So, yeah, yeah, okay. I just want to mention it real quick. Um, you know, it's, um, if there, if there's something that I, you know, that I could say, like one of the huge things, it's another huge thing that's impacted me since I've been on Clapper. It's been this show with Kaz. Um, it's been incredible. I mean, we talk about these subjects and in these topics that a lot of people can't have conversations in because they, they get into arguments and it gets really negative and, and it becomes a separator. And what I appreciate so much is like, there is a clash in personality at times you'll see between Kaz and I, just because mm -hmm. like of where, where we are, where I'm at, where she's at. But what's so wonderful is 
that show and its purpose is to show how we can have those differences, we can have those disagreements, and we can have different perspectives. Yet, we can still be good to each other. We can still be friends and, and consider each other family even and mm-hmm. still move forward and support each other. Right. And that's the big thing about that show. Um, so anybody here in the radio or anybody out there, if you haven't checked it out, it's called Let's Talk with uh, Aussie Kaz and Yeli in the Mist. We do it every Thursday uh, at 9 p.m. Central. And um, we just talk about controversial subjects. Sometimes we'll talk about just tough subjects of the moment and we'll just get the audience involved. And there's even times where we might get into a point where we can't stop laughing until we cry. (laughs) Right. Um, Clapper is amazing. You know, it's a, it's a community where, you know, I can, I can get, I did get hooked on it. Okay. I got hooked (laughs) on the people, not, not Clapper itself, the people. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like having a family you know that is a distant family but they're family they're there for you you know they 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 really care you know um i don't have enough words for clapper i really don't i can't stay away from it every time i'm in a down spot or something that's the first place i go well not the first place second place i mean i pray and all that kind of stuff too but when I need someone that will listen, you know, when I need that shoulder to cry on maybe or whatever, I know who to go to, you know, and I know where to find them. So yeah, it's a great community. And um, for anybody that isn't on Clapper, come over and just take a look and give us a try. You know, seriously, just give us a try. Um, Best bunch of people you'd ever meet i swear most definitely i agree here we go yeti all right i appreciate you you are (laughs) i appreciate you rita (laughs) um i appreciate the time we had together and i know we're going to get to know each other a little bit better um as time goes on of course you can't learn everything about a person in one interview you know or (laughs) one get together um i really love that Whatever that is behind you, that's Yeti, isn't it? Uh, that's the original I, logo. That is the one that uh, bit of comedy. This is the logo that I drew while I was on the toilet. When I was thinking about on my phone, I was thinking about what is my logo going to be for when I uh, come up with my just my identity to people, right? Just like that image. And uh, this was the original. And then this one I sent to my friend who's a, a an incredible artist. I'm trying to get him on Clapper. Um, and he turned it into what you see today. Um, so I love it. I love it. it's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Okay. So again, I want to thank you, Yeti. And I want to um thank everybody in the radio on Clapper. Oh my God, there's a lot of people. There um, are. So Thank you, everyone, for being here today. I really appreciate you. I know Yeti does, too. Everyone on Facebook. And um, hopefully I can have him back again at a later date. Um, So anyway, everybody have a good day. Good evening. Thank you. You, too. Hold on. Rita, Ariel wants to say something really quick to you. Okay, sure. Go ahead. I just want to say that was an amazing interview. Oh, thanks, babe. Rita does an incredible job. She like one thing, Rita, if I could say to you about like how you interview and and what I've learned watching your stuff, um, you do an incredible job at listening. Like you, you literally you really do sit and give the attention. Um, you you and you you kind of hand that over, right? You kind of say, here, I'm going to now be here and be present but i'm you know you do an incredible job of that and that's something i'm still learning how to be better at yeah you know yeti i appreciate that because um i was never listened to as a child so i had to work on that okay and i wanted my podcast my radio to be different this radio this podcast is not for me it's for you. It's for all those people on Clapper. You know, I want you to have a voice, not me. Okay. 
I mean, my voice is what? I mean, it, it, it means something, okay? I don't know how to explain this. My voice means something. Yes, I do need to be heard. But I wanted to give you a voice. And so, yeah, that's what I do. I sit back and listen. I don't rehearse this. My questions are always different. They're never the same. I know you've probably seen some podcasts where they ask a list of questions. Not me. I listen to you, and that's how I get my questions. And and that's one of those things about this show that makes it super special is that it's, again, it's a very organic experience for people. Right? They get to see people in a real element rather than kind of like a, I'm going to take you on this journey through questions. No, you kind of just let it kind of unfold. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. And um, we do need to end it, though. Yep. So um, I do hope to have you back in the future. And I got to get Ariel up here with me and a few other people. So, um, yeah. yeah, help me out. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will. We'll work it out. We'll make it happen. I appreciate you so much, Rita. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, thank you. All right. 